I saw yesterday um, an article that was saying about 147 million people yesterday and today are finishing up Christmas shopping. Now, we live in a country of about 340 million, so that's like half of us. You're, you're not done yet. And uh, for anybody who's anticipating a Christmas delivery, I saw this this week. I thought it was funny. It says, I don't know who needs to hear this, but stop tracking that package. It's in the Lord's hands right? Um, buying gifts for friends and family, it really is a beautiful thing, but it can also be an incredibly stressful thing. Um, I got ahead of the game this year. It's something I've never done. I started buying my wife, Beth, some gifts in November. I thought I'm going to stay in front of this deal, and um, I don't know if you are like this, but I, I was almost today years old when I realized that she and I share an Amazon account, which I've known for years. <laughs> What I did not realize is that if you share an Amazon account, you can go back and see every gift that's ever been ordered. Um, and it kind of ruins the whole spirit of the deal. And so this year I was being careful. I stepped outside of Amazon uh, to get her gifts. And that's a very risky thing to do, right? Because you kind of, we build up this trust for whatever reason with Amazon. And then when you go outside of that, it can get kind of scary. And so I spent the last month and a half trying to intercept things as they showed up at our house so that she would not see them. Had a couple of things sent here to the church. And because I started so early, I had to get very creative on what I did with those gifts because I didn't want her to discover them. And for whatever reason, I don't know if it's because of my age or just the stress and busyness that this time of year brings into my own personal life, there is one that I have completely forgotten where I put it. Like, legit. And I have searched for weeks trying to figure out where did I stick this gift. I looked in every cabinet, um, every nook and cranny, I searched my office. I don't know if you're like this. I've searched my car three times. Um, one should have been enough, right? Like it's not hiding, but I did that. I've looked in our garage. And at this point, I am honestly hoping that somehow Beth found it, wrapped it, thinking it was for somebody else. And then tomorrow morning when our family's together, if one of my kids unwraps, I'm just gonna be like, yo, that's for your mom, right? <laughs> so it'd be an interesting moment. Um, but I think this kind of picture kind of summarizes for a lot of us the holiday season. Like if you think about it, right? Sometimes there's so much coming at us. We get so busy and there's so many things to get done. It's very easy, even during Christmas, to kind of lose the meaning and the significance of this moment simply because of the craziness of this season. And this idea that this is about God's gift to us in Jesus Christ, we can understand that with our mind. That's the reason that today all across the entire planet, there are millions and millions of people who claim the name of Jesus who will be gathering in different settings all over the place. We can understand that with our mind and yet not really allow it to penetrate deep down into our souls so that it impacts our life in any significant way. Part of the good news of this weekend is we don't have to search for God's gift because he's made it readily available to any and all who are willing to receive it if you want it. It's the gift of security, the gift of joy, and the gift of hope. And that's what I wanna talk to you about for a few minutes this morning. And then we're gonna light some candles, and then we're gonna sing Silent Night, and we're gonna send you guys on to your day. It's gonna be a beautiful moment. I wanna pick this up in Luke chapter two. You guys know the story. The shepherds are out in the field and the angel shows up and here's how Luke tells the, about this moment, beginning in verse nine. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's gl glory surrounded them. And they were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. What's important is that the angel reassured them. So the message of Jesus is good news because in him, you and I find an ultimate sense of security. 
If you're a regular around our church, you heard me talk about how a few weeks ago, Beth and I cleaned out our garage. It's um, about an annual event around our house. It's kind of a big deal. Um, you know, we joke around about all the stuff that we've moved from house to house to house. And over the years, it just keeps getting bigger. And so we were kind of going through that annual deal and we were going through some boxes. And um, I did not realize that Beth has literally kept basically everything that our children have ever produced. They're grown men now. And we've got these boxes. I'm thankful I didn't throw them away in a fit of rage at some point. And so it was kind of nice to just kind of go through and see all the stuff they'd made. But in one of the boxes, um, there was a, a blankie from one of our kids. And um, my three sons aren't coming to the next service, so I'll tell you, it was our middle son, Joe. Um, he was the one that had to have his blankie, and it was really just a blue burping cloth. If you're a parent, you know burping cloths, right? Not, not really that big of a deal, but to Joe, it was a huge deal. In fact, it became his most prized possession. He would not go anywhere without it. He would not do anything without it. When he was sleepy, he wanted his blankie. When he was upset, he wanted his blanket. And for a while, it really was a source of security. And I'm like the whole time, brother, I'm right here. I'm like a hundred times your size. I'm your security, but he needed that blanket. Kind of reminds me of Linus in a Charlie Brown Christmas. Linus always had his blanket too, right? But there's a moment in the cartoon where he reads the Christmas story. And when he gets to the line where the angel says, don't be afraid, there's something very subtle that happens right there. Linus drops his blanket. Don't be afraid, and so he lets it go. Now, I know some of y'all are gonna go straight to Google because you don't believe what I just said. You're like, man, I've seen that a thousand times, you're lying. Well, you're about to find out when you go to Google that I'm absolutely right. It's quick, and you might miss it, but it's there. It's a very intentional move by the creators. It was intended to show Linus having this moment as he read the Christmas story that I don't have to hold on to what I get security from. I can let it go and find security simply in the meaning of Christmas. God is with us. We've all got our own security blankets, do we not? Whether it's a savings account or an IRA, maybe it's your job, maybe it's that thing that you're into, it's that hobby, it's that habit that you've carried with you. Maybe for some of us, it's a sense of our health. We feel like we're invincible and because we feel good and our body's in good shape, we get security out of that. Maybe we find security in other people. I mean, there are literally all kinds of things that we get security from. But if the last three or four years have taught us anything, is that that, that is just not enough. That only God can give you a sense of peace and security in fearful times. In fact, if you back up to Luke chapter one, Mary is also visited by an angel. And just like with the shepherds, the angel starts the same way. This is Luke 1, verse 30. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her. For you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He'll be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. So don't be afraid, Mary. Why? Because of Jesus. And make no mistake about it, Mary had a lot to be afraid of. In fact, when the angel first makes the announcement, the gospel writers tell, tell us that her response was she was disturbed and confused. Mary's not like, hey, this is awesome. I'm gonna have a baby in a weird way that nobody else has ever had a baby and people are gonna talk about me for thousands of years, I can't wait. She's actually like, how can this be? I haven't been with a man. Mary was a young teenage Jewish girl from a really tight-knit Jewish community. And this news would have pushed people to the very edge. She's engaged, but she's not married. And she cannot be walking into that community pregnant. She can't be like, hey, y'all aren't gonna believe this. An angel appeared, and it was a supernatural thing. This didn't happen like y'all thought it happened. 
Listen, it doesn't matter what era you're from. If you try that on people, most of them are gonna be like, yo, <laughs> I've been around the block a few times. I don't really believe this story. In fact, even Joseph, when he heard the news, was planning on breaking the whole thing off right up until he himself got a visit, a visit from an angel who ended up setting him straight. The point is Mary had a ton of challenges before her. And the reality is that you may have shown up today and you've got some challenges in front of you. I mean, if you think about it, everywhere we look, there are challenges. We face challenges globally. We face challenges right here in our own community. Some of us inside of our family, there are challenges. And then when you look at your personal life, some of us, we are up against some pretty big stuff. And what that can do is cause us to begin to experience fear. We fear for our kids. We fear for the future. We fear for all the unknowns of what's going on in the world right now. There are all kinds of things that can cause fear. But Christmas, unlike any other season of the year, it is Christmas that reminds us to just pause, to pump the brakes, to, to remember that God's perfect love is shown to every single human being through his son, Jesus, who was born, lived, died, and rose again for every single one of us. In fact, the Bible says that perfect love casts out fear. So listen, part of the message of Christmas is be concerned. It's okay to experience fear. It is a part of the human experience, but you don't have to be driven by that fear. The message God has for us is the message of Christmas. Don't be afraid because Jesus has been born. You can lay down your fear just like Linus laid down his blanket. The gift of security is yours if you actually want it. Here's another thought. In Jesus, we can experience the gift of joy. The gift of joy. I have been a Chicago Cubs fan my entire life. Uh, I don't know, we got any Cubbies in the room? Yeah. yeah, lovable losers, right? Lovable losers. I mean, the Cubs are unbelievable. Storied city, storied franchise, play in a storied stadium. When you look over the course of that franchise, they've got storied players. The problem is they don't win very much. Um, and so here's what I've had to learn. Even though the Cubs bring a great deal of joy to my life, that joy does not last. It shows up during the winter meetings. It progresses through spring ball. But shortly after opening day, everything kind of has a tendency to go downhill. So we get like a month or two, right? And then it's awesome. Well, the reason this is so is that there's something deep down inside of me that I think is never satisfied with things. And it's not just unique to me. All of us on some level, if we could be honest with ourselves, we struggle too. And we convince ourselves all the time, I'll be happy when I get that gift that I've been waiting for. Or I'll be happy when all of my family is together, when all the baby birds come back to the nest. I'll be happy when I get a new car or a new job or a new home. I'll be happy when I get out of debt. I'll be happy when I get into the college of my dreams. I'll be happy when I find the one, right? The one. I'll be happy when I get engaged to the one or when I get married to the one. I'll be happy when the one starts to change. I'll be happy when I have kids or when my kids finally get out on their own. I'll be happy when Christmas is here. And there's a bunch of us, we're already thinking it. I'll be happy when Christmas is over. Luke chapter two points us to what I think we're all looking for. This is verse 10. <clears throat> but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy. Jesus is good news that brings great joy. And this week I made a list and because of the season that it is, I checked it twice of all the reasons that you and I can feel joy because of Jesus. The promise of Jesus means that when you and I are weak, he is our strength. When we feel lost, he is our guide. When we are helpless, he is our helper. When we are sick, he is our healer. 
When we don't know the way, he is the way. When we're attacked, he is our shield. When we're trapped, he is our deliverer. When we're out of resources, he is our provider. When we're scared, he's our defender. When we're broken, he binds up our wounds. When we feel like we're completely alone and nobody else cares, he is our companion. When we're angry, he is our calm. When we hit rock bottom, he is our bedrock. When we sin, he is our forgiver. When we're afraid, he's our encourager. When we wanna give up, he helps us actually rise up. When we fall flat on our face and we fail, he is our ultimate victory. When we're panicked by what's going on in the world, he is our peace. When we feel depressed and like we just can't go one more day, he is our ultimate hope. When we cannot see the future, Jesus is our light. When we feel like we're adrift and have no sense of direction, he is our anchor. When we're completely exhausted and worn out, he is our strength. In those moments when we find ourselves frustrated, he's the answer. When we've lost our sense of purpose and direction, he shows up and moves and works in our lives. When we feel like we've hit a dead end, he is our fresh start. And the promise is, when you and I pass from this life to the next, he is the resurrection and he is life. And I don't know if you've ever experienced God moving in one of those areas, this would be a great time for us to put our hands together and thank God that Jesus showed up. So listen, y'all, whatever you're facing, it is something that Jesus has already conquered. And through him, you can find victory. The scriptures tell us, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. And so this Christmas, you can celebrate the gift of security and you can celebrate the gift of joy. And as a result, you can experience the gift of hope. The shepherds are amazed at the angel's announcement. Um, but they take it even further and they go to Bethlehem because they want to see this child that the angel talked about. And so sure enough, they find Jesus. He's lying in a manger and they rejoice and they celebrate. And then in verse 20 of Luke chapter two, here's what we see. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel told them. That's amazing, right? They go and see Jesus and it's exactly what they thought. In fact, it's even greater than what they thought. This is the Messiah that they've been waiting on their entire life. But then there's something interesting that happened. Luke says, they go back to their fields. In other words, they go back to their same old lives. They go back to the same old fields to watch over the same old sheep, to spend the same old lonely nights away from their homes, to keep the same old predators away from the sheep. They go back and do the same old work. What's different is, according to Luke, is they go back with a completely different frame of mind. Before, they were just watching the sheep, but now they're watching the sheep and they've got Jesus. Before, they were just doing the mundane things that one does when they shepherd sheep, but now they're doing the same old mundane thing, but they got Jesus. Before, they didn't know what the future held, but now they don't know what the future holds, but they know that it's in Jesus' hands. And I think the same is true for us, again, if you want it. The truth is that we're gonna go back to the same old work in a few days. You're gonna go home in a few minutes with the same old spouse, and you're gonna gather around with the same old kids, and you're gonna drive the same old car, and when Christmas is over, you're gonna be confronted with the same old bills, and you're gonna face the same old challenges. But you and I can be changed because of what Jesus has done, even if our circumstances stay the same. And what I love about the hope that Jesus offers is it is a hope that is meant to be shared. Like Mary and Joseph, you and I are invited into the process of God's redemptive plan not just for our own lives and for our own families, but literally the redemptive plan of the whole human race. We have the opportunity today to offer hope to somebody else. And when you offer hope, I'm telling you, it can impact your family, it can impact your kids, it can impact your grandkids, it can change your job, your school, it can upend this entire community if we're willing to do it. 
In fact, I would argue that is the mission of the church. Beyond that, that's the driving force behind everything that we do here at this church. When I think back about the, the, the course of our history since 1964, when eight families met across the street for the very first time, way out in the country of West Knoxville, they met in an old house. And when I look over the years and over the decades, I can honestly say every decision and every attempt, every ministry that we've ever done, every step that we've ever taken, it is a driving force behind our willingness to share hope with our community. It is literally positioning ourselves to be one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. That, that's the purpose of Cokesbury Church. It's not to stand on a soapbox, it's not to point our finger, it's not to pass judgment, it's simply to say, hey, we found a little bit of hope in our life and that hope is causing some joy. We feel some security now because of Jesus and if you want that, we'd love for you to, to come alongside you and help you find that in your own life. That, that's it, it's just to love God, to love people and to find a way every day to share some hope. Now, a big part of that if you're a regular part of our church, over the past couple of years, you know that we've been talking a lot about our debt. And I wanna give you an update because we're not gonna see each other next, until next year, right? Because you're not gonna come next weekend, you're gonna watch online. Um, it started coming out of COVID, right? Um, that year that we came out of COVID, we realized that the world has changed, our culture has shifted, and the way that people all across the planet do church is gonna have to change. And we knew that we wanted to be positioned to reach as many people as we possibly could. And so that year in October, we were at $2.2 million, which means it was gonna take us 10 years to finish paying off that debt. So by 2031, we'd be done. And so we challenged you guys, hey, can we take care of this so that we can position ourselves to reach even more people? So in 2023, we started the year off, we were at 600,000, massive step forward. Now, as of right now, here is where we are today. <laughs> we, got down, we got down to a level where some of our leaders um, kind of internally challenged each other to finish paying off the debt. And um, last week we got the final check that got us to zero. And so if you're a regular part of our church, um, in February, we're gonna actually get to burn the note. It's gonna be a blast. We're gonna do that out in the parking lot. Um, here's why I think this is a big deal, and I really want you to latch onto this, because it, it's about um, the core of who I think we are as a people of faith. Um, your generosity, not just with your finances, but the way you guys give your life away, the way that you invite your friends to show up, the way that, that anytime we have a need, you just step right up, um, the creativity that you guys have expressed over the years, it is, it is literally unbelievable. And I wanna tell you though, we didn't come this far to just get this far. Um, paying off our debt is gonna allow us to position ourselves to do exactly what God asks us to do next. So the work is actually just beginning. But as your pastor, I want you to know, I don't have the words to say thank you enough. Um, you guys are an inspiration um, and a joy to be around. And most days when I wake up, I cannot believe that God has given me the opportunity to be your leader. And I want you to know that no one on our staff takes that for granted, which is why now we get to light candles. It's not, it's not pro forma that you do that during Christmas. There's a whole reason behind it. Um, it's the bedrock of our faith that teaches us that there was a moment in human history that maybe for some of us doesn't feel too much unlike the moment we're in right now, where everywhere you looked, it was just a world filled with darkness and people struggled and people were trying to find their sense of identity and their sense of purpose and trying to figure out why was I placed on this planet and scriptures say at just the right moment, God stepped from heaven into human existence through the form of a small baby. And with the coming of that child 
came light back into a dark world. So today, especially if you're a regular part of our church, this is a moment to be reminded of all that God has done in your life. And so as I light my candle from the Christ candle, I remember the grace beyond grace beyond grace that was shared with yours truly that I could not beg for, I could not borrow, and I could not steal from somebody else. I think of the ways that God has blessed my life and blessed my family, and the ways that God has blessed our church, and the way that God has moved in our community. But I'm also reminded that it does not stop there, that because I have the light of Christ in me, it's my job to share the light of Christ with someone else. And then that light gets shared with others. And our hope is that the more people that experience the light of Christ, that there'll be a tipping point out there that ultimately changes the world. So you're invited now to share the light with those sitting around you. And the great miracle of the moment is that while it's dark right now in just a very few moments, the room will be filled with light.
It is a beautiful thing to stand at and get my perspective to see the light spread across the room and to see you guys um, with your faces lit up by simple candles. And I hope that as you leave this place today that, um, that you'll go offer peace and grace and hope to those that you come into contact with. For those of you that are gonna travel to see parents or grandparents or other family, I hope that you'll be safe and that you'll return home in one piece. Um, I want you guys to know that I love you and that it's been a tremendous year and I cannot wait to get to 2024 to see where God is gonna lead us. So go now in God's peace and may God's peace go with you. Merry Christmas, everybody.